Carson Scott, joined by Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. Carson, what have you got for us? Nadine, it is all go here. We are in countdown mode. And Mark, you know, those cranes, the drilling, uh, whatever's going on tells you there is activity. But what's intriguing is that you go back 10 years ago. This is the last decision by Governor Stevens. He didn't do anything when he took over in September of 2006. His first change was in November, which is what we're kind of now expecting that Governor Lowe might do when he takes over the same date this month, a decade on. The exact opposite reasons uh, call for a cut, not a raising of rates, which is what Governor Stevens did in 06. Isn't that intriguing? Yeah, it's kind of, as you say, like a 180-degree flip round. You know, the, the reason for the cut would be continuing weaker CPI, both domestically and offshore. Um, you know, be interested to see the GDP print, which is uh, tomorrow, I think, kind of around about 3.2% expected. But it's going to be mainly the, on the CPI side, I think, that uh, they'll be cutting because, you know, employment is still playing the game, you know, both domestically and also in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, November is a possibility uh, for, for Lowe to maybe uh, kind of sharpen his pencil. You talk of the Fed, uh, or the U.S. at least. So, you know, their thinking will be currently what as far as the waiting game continues or they're put out of their misery this month even, Janet Hikes. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, th I think December or maybe even 2017 on my reckoning, I think, you know, the, the employment data wasn't particularly strong in terms of the headline numbers. And then also, if you kind of get down into the detail as well, you know, the average uh, hourly earnings and the average uh, weekly uh, hours worked as well were both softer than expected. Mm -hmm. So I think that gives the, the Fed all the excuses they need just to hold off and just, just kind of see what the other data that uh, does happen in the meantime. It's a proverbial goodbye to all that Robbie Burns style for the governor. Now, on that measure, reflections, or is it too soon to tell Deng Xiaoping style as to what legacy the governor leaves us? Uh, I mean, from where we stand now, I think he's done a, done a pretty good job navigating diff very, very difficult times. You know, if you think he's uh, been there 10 years, he's seen the GFC and the aftermath of that. Uh, and I think they've done a pretty good job in terms of, you know, the central banks of the world. I think that, I think he should be pretty proud of his, uh, his his role here and he hands it on in a in a pretty stable position. You know, there's a bit more ammunition left in the gun if, if need to be. Um, but I think uh, he'll be pretty happy with uh, with his job. And, uh, you know, the, the successor, important to, I, I suppose, move fast on what? Uh, any any handover, there'll be a speech uh, before too long, uh, inevitably, as Glenn Stevens himself served up a pub one. What, what do you want to see the world view uh, pan out as from, from Lowe's perspective, particularly on China? Yeah, look, I, I think it'd be more of the same. I mean, he's been inside the RBA for a long time. I think it's going to be a... You know, steady, steady hand on the rudder, so to speak. I don't think there will be huge amounts of change. It's not going to be similar to Mark Carney coming in from Canada over to the Bank of England, where you do have that external candidate coming in. That has and he's been quite measures. vocal on, on negative rates, Carney has, uh, prepared to speak out against other central banks. Is that the sort of thing you'd like to see from Lowe, a, a boldness uh, rather than a timidity in the face of extraordinary monetary policy actions ex-Australia? Uh, I, 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 I don't think he's going to be as, as outspoken as Carney. I don't think that's his, his style uh, and you know you could argue whether Mark Carney has maybe kind of overreached sometimes you know he's been called the unreliable boyfriend for you know how many times he's kind of given the, the market the head fake in terms of whether he's going to hike rates or cut rates and then they're not really sure so not a crime to change your mind though no, no, no. Exactly. Wait for more information. Exactly, and and that, and that's it's always been data dependent. And that's always been his point of view. Mm. Uh, he has been vocal, as you say, in terms of negative rates. I mean, it'd be tough to see that happening in Australia that we get down to such levels that we would even talking about that. So, you know, I think in terms of uh, in terms of Philip Lowe, I think it'd be as I say more of the same, and I think it'd be kind of. Uh, just continuing to do this, do the statements exactly the same. Maybe we do see a bit more focus on maybe the employment side of things or the CPI. I mean, he may have to wrestle with maybe changing that CPI uh, band that he's targeting. Well, the governor, Governor Stevens said pretty, but not over my dead body. So that would be a kind of the master you've you've, you've deviated from best practice. You'd do that at your peril, wouldn't you? But yeah, but it, again, it's probably. I don't think they probably will do that, but there'll be probably more research down the line. Mike, always a pleasure. Thanks, Thank Mark. you so much. OK, and we'll have David Bassanis from Beta Shares joining us. That was Mark, uh, of course, Bailey from FIG. David's here, special guest host from Half Past the Hour. You've got a cast of characters as well back at base. Lots ahead, Nadine.